Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Our first guest of 2020. I'm excited to have this guy. We always have great chats. Dan and Ken, what's up? What's going on, bro? Happy New Year. Yeah, Merry Christmas, all that good stuff. Yeah, what happened over the New Year? Where are you up to? Um, New Year's night, we didn't do anything. We saw the family and then New Year's Day, went to field day and had a, a fantastic time. We ripped, we teared, we did all the good things. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was good, man. It was, it was good to have that. I mean, we still worked, but just, the you know, when you're mentally, you, you're still working, but you're... The anxiety of having to work isn't there. You're just kind of working because it's like, oh, yeah, like I do enjoy this, whatever. So it was M- good. Much fan, fan engagement at the festival? You know, what, people. a lot of people <laughs> ask me that. It's like, how do you answer that without being a wanker? Yeah, do yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, bro, it was fucking hectic. And then it's like, come on, bro, like, chill out. Like, do you know what? Was, I've like, thought about this a lot. And, like, I appreciate people coming up to me now, but I didn't really in football. Because when I think about it, all the older boys were like, oh, like, you know, you know if you kind of enjoyed that, as a young bloke coming yep. through, it kind of wasn't cool and all the older boys would pull you in line. Yeah, that's, that's so true. I was speaking to someone about it um, just the other week and basically the way, way I see it is when while I was playing footy, I mentally thought, don't get me wrong, I, I enjoyed it and initially, but then I was always like, I'm just a footy player. Like, footy is my job, so therefore I don't need to be doing this, like, you know, this kind of chore thing of like, <laughs> answering the same questions all the time. Like, It's and, kind of like that in there, yeah, isn't it? And that's, yeah. not, that's not saying that like, don't get me wrong, I totally understand that for me it's the X amount of time. For them it's their first time. But when you're younger, all you care about is what you think. Whereas like now that I'm older and I realise that these guys are the reason I exist. It's not footy. Mm. I, I can't just go play a mad game of footy and then not talk to anyone and still progress in my career. Whereas this is like bloke in a bar exists because of these people. So I really enjoy it. Every single person that comes up and speaks and says hi. And, and what's weird is they still treat you like a footy player. So they're like, oh, man, I'm so sorry for bothering you. Like, well, I'm like, bah, it's all good. It's all, it's all good. So, no, nah, it, was, it was good, man. It's, it's always – it's good to – because I enjoy the content that I create, it's kind of like a community where you, you're both vibing on. They're like, bro, I fucking love the Goosey. I mm. love fucking Victor, bra. And I'll, bro, I love it too. And you can, can talk about it. So um, now I love it. I, I love it. I'm, and I'm so fucking blessed to have it, man. So grateful. Same as me, and um, a lot of people, one of the biggest compliments I can get is like, um, you're the same person in real life as you are on Instagram, and I feel like you get that, because you are pretty similar, aren't you? That, all they say, basically, is you've got a bigger nose than I thought you did. <laughs> That's about it. No. Give us a side profile. <laughs> Bro, it's fucking... Nah, I don't know, it's alright, man. No, don't, don't, don't give me the alright, <laughs> bro. Don't give me the alright. Start off 2020 on a good night, eh? <laughs> um, no, no, the, it's just... The, I just... what what The weirdest thing for me is... Because of my own insecurities, I'm like, I can't believe you like me this much. Mm. Like, I don't deserve for you to be that keen to say hi to me. That's how I feel. Like, man, it's such a – I just feel taken back by a guy's like, bro, your content is fucking the best or whatever. And, like, people say, you got me back in the footy. I was so – all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, man, like, I can't believe you like me this much. This is crazy. Do you know what's weird? And you understand this as well. Because, like, when I'm sitting here, I make vlogs, I make podcasts. We're we're always usually on our own or we've got Mm. one guest in. You're at your your joint doing your thing. You don't, and once you press enter and send it out, you don't realise how far it goes because mm. you're like me, you love to work and you love to be on your own a lot. Mm. But then once you hit the enter, fuck knows where it goes, eh? And, and that's, the, that's the surprising thing. And Absolutely. The, and the types of people that come up to me and said very similar things to you, it's, well, I'm grateful for it, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, I think as, as well as when you get older, you kind of realise how lucky you are to be in that position. Whereas I feel like when you're young, all you're thinking about is like, you're very selfish. I mean, I, I, like, I, not like I was walking around like I didn't give a fuck about no one. Mm. But I just think as you get older, you start to realise like where you could be and where you are and why you're there. So uh, yeah, but I was fucking. It's it's just humbling. It's very humbling. And it's always like each person I speak to that's like, man, you know, love this, love that. I'm like, I'm like, thank you, man. You mm. just made my day. You mm. just and it sounds cliche and it is cliche or whatever. But like, I walk away from field day and some guys stoked that. We got to chat or whatever, but I walk away from field day going, fuck, man, all that work, all that effort, that's – this is a present I get that I get to – these guys love it, I love it, and I'm living this life. So that's the kind of way I feel now about it. Um, with people coming up to you, just uh, to be fair, it's well-deserved. I genuinely think you make the best content. And NRL, me and Lukey were talking about it um, just before you come in. And yesterday – and it's a credit to you, man. And, like, we understand how much work goes into content. So I genuinely think you're doing it the best and the way you Thanks, do it. Um, you're building the game up for the game outside of the game without affecting the game. Yep. And the great thing about that is you're connecting fans to players, players to fans. And that's what sort of the motto we're trying to buy by. And I know you've been doing it for the last couple of years. But this last year has been crazy. Oh, and man. We've had, we've had, like – We've had like sort of like the big dogs of 
of when we were playing footy, Willie, Willie Mason and Greg Bird come in and they all giving you raps. They're like, how mm. funny is Dylan Kemp? So mm. you got you got to think you're targeting like the small audience and former players because they understand it all. So that's fucking full credit to you, man. Yeah, it's 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 similar to you guys. I mean, you know, with your clothing brand, there's been people that have attempted it and, and there's been people that some go on a ride or whatever, but there's no one that has really nailed it the way you guys have and it's it's i guess it's it's a mixture of hard work it's a mixture of luck it's a mixture of everything but i think it also is a mixture of what you said like older nrl players like for example willie mason and greg bird to me outspoken you're like but they're the big dogs yeah, yeah. Do you Same, know what I mean? that's what i think about them yeah, as well yeah. so yeah. for them to say that like for them to to put not that they have an ego but like they're the big dogs so they don't have to say shit like that mm. they don't have to say oh you know how good's such and such content so um I think it's the players getting behind it that really gives it that extra, you know, launch out of just, you know, okay to something great. Because let's say I was creating this content and the players didn't get behind it and enjoy it. I feel like you don't just, you just don't get that same, uh, what's the word, I guess. Almost push, eh? The same push push behind. And also like a verified approval Mm. from the big guys. You know, if Kalen Ponga puts a video up that's got your stuff in it, You've just been verified, like, this is, like, legit within the rugby league community. You know what I mean? And the great thing about it, like, you're taking the piss out of them, but you're not. Like, do you know what I mean? That's mm. not, it's not, like, a personal attack. It's just, it's fun. It's easy to watch. And, like, I really enjoy that as well. Who's, who's your most popular um, character that you build up? Is it the oh, Victor man. Bro? Is it? Most, well, the Goosey is the most Goosey's Goosey, obviously, yeah. yeah Goosey's yeah. most popular. I mean, that's been bizarre. What's the like, best way to say Goosey? Oh, bro, I mean, <laughs> I've said it's all. It's like, <laughs> y- 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 goosey. Uh, then it's just goosey. Just goosey, little baby goosey. What's the difference between those? Well, like, little baby goose is just like, you haven't put that much effort into it. You've just kind of, just a little head, just a, a little head flick. Yeah. And then the, and just a little shank at the front with yeah, the leg. Yeah, just a little, little flick, flick. Little flick, little flick. So what's that called? Just the, a little baby goose. <laughs> Fuck! Do you know what was making me laugh the other day? Um, um, I was talking to Chico. I was like, "Oh, how's how's like going working at the bar?" Because Chico was um, working at Denon's bar. For anyone that didn't know, for a bit, and um, he was saying, "Um, Denon just got off the phone. He had a bit of an argument with his um girlfriend. He walked around the corner, and someone goes, give us a goosey.' Give us a goosey.' Oh no, no, no! What happened? No, no. What happened was he's 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 changed it up a bit. But what, okay, so oh, a bit of GST on yeah, the story, GST, Chico. Yeah, but so I mean, I've never had a fight with Mrs. Come on, no. anyway. So <laughs> we were walking, and it, actually, I shared it on my story. We were walking just up the road from here and we we actually, I know it sounds, you know, you're yeah, right, man. We actually never fight, but we're having a fight. We're just like arguing about nothing really. And she was walking ahead of me and this dude just had his phone out and he was like, you know what I want, you know what I want. And I'm like <laughs> wigging out because I'm like, bro, I'm so pissed off right now. And I gave him a goosey. Yeah. But the thing is, is the goosey ended the fight. Oh, really? Yeah, because like, you she know. She started laughing. Yeah, but she started laughing and, and I was just like, man, how can you keep fighting after you're doing fucking gooseys for some random dude? <laughs> but he didn't say anything, bro. He, about 30 metres away, he just started going, you know what I want, you know mm. what I want. And it felt like kind of sexual. And I was yeah. like, what's it doing? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I know what I Fucking goosey. And so I did it and actually ended the fight. So gooseys do bring. How many gooseys do you do a day? Well, at the festival, honestly, oh, just on your just an average day, like a oh, Wednesday. Oh, well, I didn't really go out that much, but um, surely a little goosey on the way to the toilet in the morning. I mean, when I turn corners, I goosey <laughs> it's just as, just to, just to bounce out of the corner. <laughs> um, but the field day was honestly fifty, sixty. Oh bullshit! Yeah, it was, bro. It was like the 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 amount of like the community just showing love. Like it was. I mean, it was mind blowing. Like it was bigger than when I was playing NRL. It was bigger mm. than because I went to a festival when I was at the Broncos, and I was, you know, at, at that time top try scorer in the NRL. It was bigger than that, mm. which was just to me. I was just like, far out, man. Like, how did I get this lucky? Like, fucking hell. Does it? I'll ask you a question, and I've talked about this. Um, you know, William Cribbe. Yeah, so I love. We, we went for a phase bro. where we had something that was sort of viral, and it was sort of that not the fake white yep. ATR, and it got to the point where fuck, it was almost half annoying. Yeah. Like you'd. <laughs> You'd go out and everyone was going, no, nah, da. And I was like, oh, yeah. You, you kind of have to roll. And you, you are grateful for it, but there's times like. I'm still in the honeymoon period. Oh, like, okay. I'm still in the honeymoon. Like, I, um, yeah, I've been. There's, I'm just fucking so lucky, bro. I'm so fucking lucky. Like. He, he said that as well. Like, he goes, I love it. He goes, after a while, but there's always people that go up to him and go, there he is. Like, all oh, that sort of stuff yeah, as yeah, well. That, he, and, but he's massive. Like, mm. he's international pretty much. Um, I, I, no, I'm not as big as him. So I guess, like, I love his content though. You know what's what's interesting about him and he's a perfect example of like you can have his jokes, you can say what he says, but his delivery is one of a kind. So like for example, when I started watching him initially, I was like, oh yeah, this will wear thin a bit. Like, I'll, mm. you know, fuck, like I'll, I'll eventually, um, like 
perspiration here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, bro, that's gonna wear thin. It doesn't wear thin. I watch it every day. I think it's similar to the goose. Remember we were talking about this last time, and you said about the goosey. You're like, am I saying it too much? I was like, nah, just keep <laughs> just going because it just gets funnier and funnier. It's almost like a da- like you know dad jokes and like the camo yeah. or that type of chat. I don't know. It's just yeah. I think it just suits our humor. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're totally right. I think it, because it is so ingrained in the culture and it's like part and it's of consistent, us. Consistent, right? It's in your face. It <laughs> I, what I love is it's, it gives people something that brings them together. Now, it's not like some some fucking charity worker that's like, oh, I'm so glad they're together. But like when you're with your mates mm. and it's just like nothing on and you're just thinking piss. Out the back, yeah. And then some dude's just like, bro, I'm going to start goosing. Or like, bro, do a fucking goosey, you pussy. And then he starts doing it and the boys all get up and fuck, like, yeah, bro. Yeah. So I, I really who like was that, that. Who was that cricketer that done it? Fuck, that was, he, oh, had good, he had good feet, eh? Bro, mad feet. So apparently- Off both sides too. Well, I was going, what the fuck? This is, this is information just from the comment section. So this mm. could be totally wrong. But apparently he actually played like footy growing up. And he, I think it was like a Brisbane school, maybe I could be wrong. But yeah, they were saying that him and his brother or something used to play like legit footy. And they were um, decent. And they were decent. And he- and again, this is a comment section, so fuck, could just be some <laughs> fucking dude talking nonsense. He's probably watching this, he's going, got him, got yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he used to play, and what was mad is, did you see the second one where he's, when on, he's the on the pitch? F- on the pitch, eh? And, and he's was, walking past the bowler? Is that, is that Yeah, one I think it's Steve Smith. Mm. And I think, and so, well, I feel I, like I could read his lips and then he goes goosey. I hey. swear he did. That's got to be it. Well, because I, 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 when it happened, I turned to my missus and I said, like, that's the Australian cricket side <laughs> in a test match. This is fucking crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like black caps though. Like I'm a proud Kiwi, but it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> a fucking black. It's, it's, like, it's pretty much like it's Pakistan. Um, no, so yeah, I just turned on me. So I said, "This is like when I, when I seen someone sent it to me. I was like, I just I just can't believe. Like that's the Australian cricket team. You know what I mean? Like that's they're big dogs over here, aren't they? Fucking big dogs. Like it, it was yeah. Just like I understand that they're just people. Obviously, it's just like footy, but it's like when you cross those codes like that, it's just like yeah. It's just I've seen his lips, crazy. man. And said goosey. I, I sure swear to God, we'll just say it did. We'll just say it did. <laughs> you can claim that. Yeah, I claim it. Uh, so. What goes into making content? I don't feel like, I feel like people realise this. Um, they used to hit us up all the time. Like, when's the next podcast coming out? When's the next vlog coming out? <laughs> Best question ever, <laughs> bro. Someone asked me at my nan's funeral. Like, oh, oh man, like, it was like a story, and, like, and he goes, "Oh, bro, when are you gonna drop a next vlog?" I was like, oh, "Come oh, on, bro, come just on, give bro. me give me a week off." Yeah. Um, so, what's what have you learned about making content? How hard is it to make content? And what's your structure around it? Um, so basically, like structure wise, so like. Everything is based on the news. So, like, that's the, the skeleton of everything. So, like, that's because you know that's coming and it doesn't require talent. You know, it requires talent breaking things down. But, like, when the news happens, you give a quick opinion, quick little article. doesn't take that long. So, that's kind of like the framework of what Bloke in a Bar and the Locker Room is based on when it comes to, like, being a sports network. Mm. But then when it comes to, like, podcasts, I try to release snippets from a podcast Monday to Friday. That's really hard. The, the hardest thing about that is actually – if you do it Monday to Friday is continuing to do interviews to have the content to release. Um, but there's no real skeleton. Like, so for example, there's a funny video this morning of um, Jennings head oh, noise, yeah, massive yeah, head yeah. noise. And so like, like when I see something like that and it starts, my brain starts to go, I'm like, oh, fuck that. Like, for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit um, the any given Sunday speech to it. Mm. And so like his head noise is like, what is that? Oh, that's a great the, speech. The, the, the inches. The inches. Yeah. I was about to say one yard at a time. It's yeah. game of inches. Game of inches fun. And then like, you know, then I'll, um, I'll like transparent, like put over like, you know, funny things that they've done, like Madison fucking gabbering. And like, so it's, looking at what's in his head, that's what's going on in his head. So when I see something like that, that's to be like, all right, that's a priority. Like, that's funny. Mm. I want to edit it. Because once I get an idea like that and edit it in my head, I've got to get it out. Otherwise, I'll get anxiety. Um, so, like, something like that happens, then then I'll – that's, like, that takes priority. But every day, Monday to Friday, you're going to get um, – Footy chat, like the the bloke in a bar and locker room. Mm. You get the news. You get some memes. Usually, like then you just get like in the story. You get memes as well as like just around the grounds, like you know the boys doing different funny shit or whatever. Um, but it's basically just like anything that is footy, like or sport, but mainly footy. We'll post it. So, mm. but we try. I try to keep. For example, each day I can't go a whole day just putting up funny stuff. I always make sure that at least a bit of value based in there. Well, yeah, value, but also like the, you. Ne- I need to keep respect with the, the the hardcore footy fans that are like I'm still getting quality footy analysts here because they're mm. they're your bread and butter. Like you know, not, and this is no offense to meme pages. Like meme pages, are mad. I fucking love them, but they don't have a loyal 
following meme pages like it's just like funny oh fuck that's funny yep like it whatever mm. whereas like you look at we were speaking about earlier Clark his rugby league column like he's got a smaller following but it's fucking loyal as because he you guarantee you're going to get good quality footy content there so um, that is something that I do keep an eye on is making sure that I keep even though the funny stuff gets more likes and gets shared more or whatever keep that you know integrity serious, yeah brand exactly. integrity yeah yeah um, I just fuck something just slipped my mind then you got goosey goosey yourself <laughs> Goosey, <laughs> goosey my old brain. Um, so yeah, no. Just what, what's the plans for twenty twenty with a uh, bloke in the bar? With what are we gonna do? Let's uh, talk about biz- Din and Kemp, the businessman. Oh uh, man, we got massive plans. So we'll be uh, releasing the beer very soon. Um, same, same flavor, same. Uh, yeah, same flavor as we initially. Because because when we first, so I've already launched the beer like years ago before we had the bar, and we had it in about forty bottles. Mm. It's going really, really well. But then we got the opportunity to take over the bar, and a lot of people in that position will be like. Well, why would you? You're in forty bottles within three months of becoming a brand. Like that's fucking crazy. Like, mm-hmm. why would you pull it from the bar? But I was just like, look, the, the whole reason I started this was if we build our own platform, like online platform, that gives us time. Like, whereas like the the problem with a lot of businesses, and you, you would notice too, is like with the vlogs, that's your like base of selling. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you didn't have the vlogs and you had to just get money and market, you would only have like you've got, let's say you've got I don't know, a hundred thousand dollars. That hundred thousand dollars is going to run out eventually. Yeah. Whereas, like vlogs and that, and your network and that never runs out. So, the beauty of building your own network to advertise on is you give yourself time. Anyway, so when that decision came around, I was basically like, I don't want to overextend ourselves and run out of capital in one, whether it be the bar or whether it be the the um, the bottlers. Mm. So we sold out in the bottlers, opened the bar, made it exclusive at the bar, and then basically. Ran the bar, bar was successful, and then got to a point now where we've got the we're safe enough capital wise to launch the beer into stores. So that's going to happen um, early March, mm. most likely Charity Shield Week, and everything's pretty much scheduled. You know, we got the photo shoots and all that kind of stuff. But basically, it'll be it'll be a big. You know, by the end of the year, I hope that it's in hundreds of stores around the country. I feel um, like it will be, man. You've, doing, you've done all the groundwork. You've, I hope so. you've provided so much value for the end consumer. I just yeah. feel like they're just going to smack it in on a Saturday after and day two on a Sunday. Oh, I can hope so, bro. You know, it's hard, like I don't want to expect that. You know, because like if why you, not? Well, I don't know because I feel like you know I've, they've already given me so much. My, you know, the people that enjoy bloke in a bar, but you know what it's like. Sometimes it's really hard to convert. Like you, you might put up with something, then it gets you know X amount of views, and only five percent you mm. know pull through. So we'll see. I, I think. I think we have really ingrained ourselves within culture. So I've had quite a few people message me and say like, oh, you're the unofficial footy beer in that, mm. which is exactly what we want. That Like we want to be the footy beer. So, I mean, I'm just going to work my ring off and, and whatever. Do you, know, do you know what it is? And I feel like you're going to have a great chance with this is um, you can't you can't market uh, alcohol on Facebook and that, eh? Because it's- You can't it's boost a, it. Yeah, you can't boost it. So you yeah. can't put ad spend behind it. But what you've done and you've done a great job, and I'm just, this is me looking from an outside in, you're on everyone's story already. Yeah. So once your bear comes in, all you got to do is create, not like a challenge because there's a little bit corny, but you, you've got the Gutharina going, you've got yep. the Goosey going. Yep. The boys are smacking bottles as it is. It might as well be a bloke in the 100%, 100%. bar. 100%. And, and once you start resharing in that, I feel like that's just how it's going to grow. Yeah, exactly. And that that was the beauty with the virals thing that I didn't expect to happen. But, you know, like people are already sending Gooseys in with VBs in their hands, mm, you know, mm. so, you know, if they're sending Gooseys in with bloke in a bar, obviously I'm The official beer of the Goosey. Yeah, the Goosey. <laughs> well, you know, we actually do have plans for a Goosey beer. Yeah. It's all, uh, it's and it's all official in a sense. What do you know when you drink it? It's going to be like a little, well, it's okay. got to be like a little jolt before you <laughs> tilt it down, wouldn't you? No, nah, well, it's going to be. Nah, that's Johnny Danger though, yeah, the head tilt. I, mean. I don't yeah. want I don't want to take off the Johnny Danger, but like you could just do a little fl- little leg flick with the head back. Oh, and, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I guess we'll just pay our respects to Johnny Danger because like he, he fucking. He was the OG, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, so, but, so that, yeah, the, the Goosey will most likely be, and it's not set in stone in the sense that we definitely will release a Goosey beer, mm. but we're going to most likely have it as our mid strength and call Give You a Hangover the Goosey. Mm. Um, and that, that'll come. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, great. That's great marketing. Yeah. That. Give Hangover the Goosey. <laughs> and so that'll probably come. And I mean, I would love to have Caelan Ponger and Bob bored with that like work out something where he's happy with it or whatever mm. Cause can you imagine him with a fucking goosey candy scene oh fuck is that good um, 
But yeah, so I mean, we'll see. That the, the main thing is, is is the lager initially, the bloke in a bar lager, and and uh, I think people are going to like the cans and and all the designs and that. They're re- very very sorry. That, that's what I was going to touch on before. I really appreciate that the switch up and on your branding with yep. your um, content with your what's it called typography and all that. Yep. It looks cool, man. It, it, it just sticks out now, and you know that's your thing. You know what exactly. I mean. And that's what we're trying to figure out now. We've kind of got ours of YKTR Media, but once we saw that, we're like, oh shit! Instead yep. of chopping, changing all the time, it just looks clean, doesn't it? Yeah, but you know, that's that's the thing. It's like it's like anything. Like you know, you pay for what you get. Like I didn't create that. Yeah, I went to a place in uh, Melbourne called Alta. Like I went to heaps of different places, mm-hmm. and it, it cost quite a bit of money um, to get it done, but. You can feel it, man. Like it, it's yours. It, yeah. Now when you see that, you can just it, the whole. Because when I went to them, I I went to them. So sometimes when you go to these big design places, they will say to you, "You tell us, you know, the brand, what name it is, and that." But then we run with it, and we'll come back to you. And they they're really like controlling with what they do. Mm. Whereas like I I went because I went to a few different ones, and they kind of said that to me. Like once we take this, this is ours, and I kind of said back to them like, "I know this community. Like I'm not some dude that's just like." owns a business and I'm trying to sell to a demographic and I've got all these analysts and that like I live and breathe footy bro so like you're not going to be I'm not going to vibe with you if you're just going to take it because you don't understand the footy community like I understand the footy yeah. community and so we found so one of the guys that was already they were already one of my um, their, name, their name's Alta and they're in Melbourne they're already one of my like because I, I felt they had the best eye and I went to them and they they were really like no no you come you can come to us and bring us all the pictures the vibe tell us exactly what you want to do and then we'll come back to you and we'll work really well with you mm. and that's 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 why it works so well because I went to them with like pictures from the 80s the 90s the big jerseys you know told them the vibe I want you know blokey nostalgia because the three pillars of our brand is um bloke nostalgia and footy mm. And so I just said to him, "That's it. That, that's if it doesn't fit that, don't bother." And so that's why it just turned it out. That's like so an old school font, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it reminds is. me of Coke a little bit. I think that's why it sticks out to me so much. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Um, it's different to the Coke font, but it, it does look similar in the sense, especially the OKE. Mm. If you get rid of the OKE, and it all, that's just a tribute to how strong because like Coke has running writing on its fucking things now. Yeah, that just just tribute to how strong and good Branding. Coke's brand <laughs> is. Like fucking so good. Um, so yeah, it's a different font, but it's um, you know I, I I didn't see it initially, and most people I've spoken to didn't see it. But the, the, one every thirty might go, um, oh, that looks like kind of like old old school, whatever. Mm. I think also the horizontal, like the 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 way the OKE um, does. But the thing is, is that's kind of good because it's like everyone has a good feeling about Coke, even if you don't drink it. I don't mm. fucking drink Coke. Mm. That's probably why I didn't recognize it. But I've never drank Coke, but I still have a positive relationship with it. Um, so yeah, no, it's 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 cool. It's, it's and the good thing is when I did it, I, I said to them like I want to make sure that everything is quick. Like you, you can create content real quick. I don't want to have to fucking go to a computer and Photoshop everything in or mm. everything like that. So yeah, I, I do like the branding. It's cool, man. So one of the great posts I've seen you do was sort of based on around Latrell Mitchell, and you mm. wrote that thing. Oh, do you want to touch on that and sort of how he's been treated in the off season? I thought you nailed it, sort of spot on. And I know it's all ongoing, but what's your thoughts on Latrell? And how he's been treated over the season. This is this is a perfect example. Perfect example. Now, and I and I'm mates with Jai. I, I really like Jai as a person. So it's not, I'm not talking about him as a person. But mm. Jai Arrow just signed with the Rabbitohs, was in the exact same position, like literally the exact same position. Came off contract a year from now. Was getting big offers from other clubs. Got off bigger offer from um, the Rabbitohs, and he signed with them. And there wasn't a peep. No one said anything. Why? Because they just he's saying negative things about Jairo doesn't sell as many papers as saying negative things about Latrell Mitchell. There's there is literally no difference in their situation other than the fact that the Roosters came out publicly and said they pulled the offer. But other than that, like all the speculation and like for example the the language they use. Mm. Um, so they'll say like West Tigers fed up with Latrell pull contract. Now it could be the other way. Like they could they could totally change that language and you wouldn't read the article in a negative light but they intentionally put that um, article headline there because they're trying to position you already to have a feeling about Latrell because it sells papers to you know have this outrage or whatever and that's like there's so many different things so for example I understand the Roosters have their brand to protect I get I get all that they need to, needed to move on and they needed to um, sign who they need to sign but at the same time imagine if Latrell came out they offered him a certain amount. Then he came out publicly, didn't tell them, and said, 
Um, they didn't offer me enough, and not only did they not offer me enough, I will not sign with this club no matter what over the next year. Because that's what they did then. They said, he didn't take our offer. We mm. will not be resigning him no matter what. And on top of that, they, they t- keep making him not come back to training. Imagine if Luttrell did that. Mm. Like, what's the difference? Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I'm like, he's, he's sort of taking it all right. Like, do you know what I mean? I would have, I would have been blown up by now. That sort of happened with the um, Cody Walker situation where there was just sort of rumours sort of floating about about that he wanted to sign with someone else for yep. more money and everyone's coming through. You should be grateful this club took you on when you you were like sort of like, oh, I'm fucking sick of that shit, yeah, eh? grateful. But he come out straight away, um, put a note in the thing, he goes, hey guys, I'm looking to stay on, whatever he said. Yeah. Just kills it straight away, so. Yeah, it's hard because the, the difference, the, the problem with Luttrell is like, he is the biggest superstar in the game. You know, outside of Kalen Ponga, like, you know, maybe equal with Kalen Ponga, like when it comes to superstars, especially in the indigenous communities, huge. Mm. So like Does he need a sign of Rabbitohs? I reckon he does, eh? Oh man, it's so tough. Like the only thing is I've got personal experience with Wayne, like <laughs> signing one new deals with Wayne. This is like, not a good idea. Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, it's the Troll Mitchell's fucking I'm not the Troll Mitchell's so <laughs> different situation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> look, Wayne's an incredible coach. I would love to see him at the Rabbitohs. I just, I just hope that he doesn't. If he can get a longer term deal there, because that's that's another thing people don't realize is the Roosters off him offered him, and this is just what we're told. Like this is, you got to remember when a journalist writes an article, he is writing the most extravagant or the the best version, most of enticing. Yeah. So when they say it's eight hundred k a year, like that's the highest estimate possible that they can say. You know what I mean? So, mm. like, it might not even been 800K a year. It could have been 650. We, we've got no idea. But let's assume 800K. It was 800K for two years. You're Latrell Mitchell. Do you really want to be signed on a two-year deal when Valentine Holmes just signed a six-year deal? Mm. Like, it it just doesn't make any sense when it comes to you know, one of the big – and put it this way, people are like, oh, you know, he's <clears throat> no club's going to have any money <clears> – <throat> If Latrell Mitchell comes out and plays the way he's supposed to play or the way he does play, every club's going to have money. They'll mm. find a way to sign him. Like, it's, it's fucking G up. Yeah, it's so. crazy, isn't it? Sad. It's sad. Um, with this inclusion of guys like yourself, Clarky, um, and R.R. Rose, us to a very smaller extent, do you think the landscape of journalism is slowly starting to change? Or, oh, absolutely. Or the perception of the type of media that – I feel like people – like the fans' perception of media is changing, not, not so much the journalists themselves. What's your thoughts on journalists? Well, I just think that – you know, obviously, it's like anything. Like, n- not all journalists are bad, and mm. sometimes journalists get fed bad information. I think the more prominent ones are prominent because they play the game. So, you know, they some club comes to them and says, "Look, can you release this story? It's going to drive a price down. It's going to push. It's going to, for example, the trust story. All the stuff that was coming out of the Roosters, who told the journalists? Mm. <laughs> who told? Wasn't the trail? Wasn't his manager? Why would, he, why would his manager tell – like I spoke to his manager. I know it wasn't him, but why mm. would he even do that? It, does, it benefits him nothing. Who does, who does it put pressure on when these stories come out? Player. The player. Who I've wants- got, bro, I've got so many stories of people that have come into this office and said – and they, when they've changed clubs, and I speak about this a lot, when a player changes halfway through a contract, everyone goes, oh, he's selfish. He's only thinking yeah. about himself. But as soon as the club wants to fuck you off, they didn't really, like, no, one, no one speaks to no. – like, it's the best interest of the club. And there's, the amount of players that I know – personally and just through footy and that they've come in and they said like what happens is they go into a meeting say with some one of the big dogs out there they go oh we don't really want you here blah 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 but don't say anything to the media exactly like you're talking yeah. about and the amount of shit that gets leaked in the next day or the next week or just it's speculation it's having me personally I've literally told the club this deals you, you like the club has told me to leave I go and do a meeting with another club mm. come back and I said the deal's done I've said to the like to the club the deal's done don't tell anyone and the next day in the paper they told someone and it ruined the whole deal and mm. they were the ones that, anyway so like it happens all the time like it, it's like you look, here's a perfect example of like the, the t- like Darius Boyd signed a contract now he's not playing his career best form or footy everyone wants him just to retire and it's mm. like well hang on a sec like he he can't see he's not allowed to see his contract out now and yet if he was to leave at the height of his form or whatever, mm. everyone would be off him. Mm. And it's like, well, how's that fair? Like you're saying that – like the Ryan Madison saga, for example. Now, I think a lot more went on in the behind the scenes with that. I don't know. I don't know many blokes that would just walk in and say, I want more money. If I don't get more money, I'm walking. I've never played with someone that's done that ever. Mm. Um, I've, I've played with guys that have said, next contract, I want more money. <clears throat> but like he was like crucified for like leaving his contract halfway through because he's playing good footy. Whereas if he was playing bad footy, 
let's say came to the Tigers and was a dud. Mm. No one would give a shit. They'd be like, fucking thank God, right, right. And it's like, man, like, you can't have it both yeah, ways. Yeah, you can't have it both ways, eh? All right, so enough of the negativity. What are you looking forward to about the season coming up, 2020? Who do you think is going to win the comp? Who do you think is going to be Wooden Spoon? Oh, man. I wooden Spoon, i got no idea. Absolutely no idea. Win the comp, I think Melbourne and Roosters will be there. Like, Do you think Rabideau's going to be there? I was looking at their team. Like, I know Sammy's a big loss, but I think um, Cam Murray's about time. Like, he, He'll be the head of the pack now, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's hard because like, Cam Murray's not the same kind of player as Burgess. Like, Cam Murray is find your front, quick play the ball, heaps of work, heaps of tackles. Can you put on a shot? In, yeah, in it, it's, he can. But, you know, the, Sam, Sam's doing it to hurt someone. Mm. Cam Murray's doing it to, like, win a, a contest. And so it's going to be interesting to see if they can get Jai Arrow, I think they'll be a real, real chance. Have they not got him? I thought they've got him. That's for next year. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're trying to get him for this year. Mm. If they can get Arrow and Luttrell, they're 100%. And, the thing with Latrell, if he can move to fullback, he just need. I think he just needs to trim down mm. for fitness and that. If he does trim down, and they've got Arrow as well, oh man, just GI two point oh, isn't it, mate? It's just a joke. I think the, imagine that spine. Like you go Damian Cook, you go Adam Reynolds, you go um, Cody Walker, yep, and then Latrell at the back. Fuck, there's some points in there. Oh my god! And so, and all you would need then is like one or two, you know, forwards just to like for, for depth for them, mm. and they could definitely be a title threat. But I think this year, it's if they don't get Arrow, they don't get Latrell. I think depth wise, they might just have, they might, they'll still get to where they probably got. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see how they, if they can unearth some young stars, then maybe just see interesting how they go through like origin period in that. Um, Roosters, 100%, they'll probably be up there. Um, how does Kyle Flanagan go in that new structure? I feel like you'll kill it, eh? Yeah, I think he's. Fine. I don't think I don't really have to do too much in, in that Roosters side. Like you just got, sort of like Melbourne, where you kind of have to just play a role and like, yeah, I, I, like he's not expected to run around a team like a traditional no, seven. No. And I think, like, people underestimate how uh, influential Kiri was, even though Kronk is fucking one of the best ever. Mm. But I think people don't realise how good Kiri is, how important Kiri is for that team. Like, when he came back, he they he had, like, this crazy amount of try assists in, like, fucking such a short amount of time. Like, in one game, I think he had, like, six try assists or some, five try assists or something like that. How big's the target on his head now with, I don't know, I know you don't want to really talk about this, but it is a factor and it is something that coaches will bring up and Ford, Ford coaches will bring oh, up with the head knocks, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's going to have one of the biggest targets on his head and they play deep into the line, the Roosters. Like, he's not, yeah, he's he, not fucking scared. Bro, he's fucking he's one tough, of the bravest. Bro. He's tough, bro. He's tough, yeah. Um, and, it's, and again, when we say, you know, head knocks, we're not saying the coaches are going to be like, I want you to go out and head high him. They're going to be go out and say, I want you to whack every time you can they'll, hit him. Do you know what? They'll say it, but they'll say it without trying to say it, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. the coaches do that. Someone yeah. coming back from a knee. Oh, yeah, uh, the knee. Generally... And that, I think head's a bit hectic, though. But, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Like, I remember when I came back from my, my broken ribs and my lung collapse, they were literally calling on the field, like, hit his ribs, hit his mm-hmm. ribs, because I came back in, like, three weeks like a dumb fucking idiot. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so it does happen. It does happen. Um, I think that – I won't say his name, but, um, like, Corey, he was kicking one time and someone dove at his legs and he got up and he goes, ooh, that's an ACL. Good luck with that. You know what I mean? So that's it, it, yeah, it gets re- it, get, it gets ruthless out yeah, there. I would never fucking. That's crazy. If I said who it was, it wouldn't surprise you too. Oh really? <laughs> Loves it. Um, yeah. So Storm Roosters will be there. I, what is Cam- what's Canberra doing this year? I mean, the, the hardest thing for the Canberra got a fantastic roster, but they've they've signed Williams, which is he's also a ball running half. So I don't know how. It's going to be interesting to see whether White and Whiten and Williams can gel because they're both ball running halves. How good was Jack Whiten last year? <clears throat> oh man, special way. That was special. That was a special year for him. And he just the, like he, his playing ability was fantastic, but his energy. Mm. I love his energy. Every run is hard. Every tackle is hard. Like he's constantly, you know. You can't really spot him up too, eh? Because you put a shot on him. A hundred percent. Yeah, like that's he, people were trying to, and he was whacking blokes. So he's, he's surprisingly bigger in real life than a lot of people realise. Oh, I, I, I always knew he was big, but I, I haven't seen him in in real life. But I I didn't think he was that strong in defence. You know mm. what I mean? Like he's fucking. What, he's probably the best six defender in the comp. Him and Munster really, mm. but he, he's more maybe more aggressive. That Munster could be aggressive, but I'm assuming Storm don't let them be aggressive because they want to no <laughs> holes to in the system, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Whiten was incredible. He he, you know, he he might even push for a six jersey in Origin. Like if Latrell's killing it, and and uh, you know Maloney's gone, mm. it could be Kiri, um, Cleary. Uh, well, it could be Kiri and Whiten, or yeah. it could be Cleary and Kiri. So like, there's so many options. But um, could be yeah, it could be. It'd be hard to keep Kiri out of the. 
team if he plays good this year. Mm. So it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Yeah. I was about to say size, but size doesn't matter in that position. Good look at Maloney, bro. He's 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 a midge. Yeah, he is small. The, and and also like I think Kiri has proven like he doesn't struggle in defence or anything. Like mm. he's fucking back to back premiership winning like half. So yeah, I, yeah, I think it was. And also Cleary is a fucking mad defender. So, he is a yeah. very steady. Yeah. Who's the big improvers? Is it the boys from our um, Penrith? <clears throat> oh man. I think Eels, if, if Eels can continue they're, from last year, they could be a real title threat. Their back five is a fucking joke, isn't oh, it? Oh, man. And then you, but you look at their spine as well. Yeah. It's just like, you know, Brown, Moses, um, Marnie, you know, and then they Gutho. got Mad- yeah, Gutho. They got Madison not in. They got um, Campbell Gillard. Like, fuck, man. They got Nathan Brown. Nathan Brown's a gun, man. I mm. rate him. He's a gun. I reckon he's really thick through the body. He must be fucking heavy through the body, eh? Because he puts some shots on. Yeah. He- it's more like a chest kind of Yeah, like, like just comes out and just like, <laughs> like that. It's he like, must be like, fucking heavy in the body, man. I love when he talks. He sounds like a wog and he's like. like he, he, yeah, he, he's got he, a bit in him. Yeah, yeah oh. He's Italian, but yeah. I love how woggy he sounds. But because like when I put his interview up, people are like, why is he talking like a wog? I'm like, you don't That's get how it. He talks, he's actually yeah. a wog. Yeah, um, but every every like every day like we used to go over for barbecues at his house, fuck like barbecue out the back, yeah. like Lebanese style. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was mad though. He cook, can cook. I can cook me a feed. Fuck. <laughs> um, I, I hate cooking. Eh? I you know what I hate about cooking is like you do it for forty five minutes and then it's gone in like ten seconds and you're just like fuck man. I just put forty five minutes into that shit. What's your specialty? I don't cook. Oh, you don't cook at all. Is no, you Mrs. Mrs. Cook or you just eat out? No, Mrs. Cooks. She all right? Yeah, she's good. She's um. She's actually fucking literally the perfect housewife. <laughs> like, bro, and you know, it's funny. Like she walked in the other day and she was like, um, she's like, oh, I just like got all the lint off your clothes and I folded them and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I fucking loved it, eh? She, like, she, oh, you loved it or she loved she it? She said she loved it. Fuck. And I was like, bro, you don't understand. Like, Can you get her my missus there? Oh, man. She goes, I just like, in my head, I didn't say because you don't want to give it too many raps. Mm. So, oh, that's mad. But in my head, I was like, that is honestly music to a bloke's ears. Like, fucking oath. Like she, she just... Wants to take care of her. Don't get me wrong. She's, she, I mean, she's fucking killing it job wise, but she just loves that. Mm. So. Keeper. All right, we're going to jump into the Q and A um, side of it. Um, little Jamie over here, little fake Jamie. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no names from the horoscope. So here we go. Um, all right, who has the best goosey? Let's go past and present. I mean, it's got to be fucking Ponga. Uh, best goosey, easy at the moment. Who's your uh, top three? It, currently, yeah. Well, Benji still plays. Yeah. So like Benji Prime, Ponga Prime, I'll, I'll probably give it to to Ponga. Just big call. Um, then you always got Sean Johnson. Mm. Um, I don't mind a, a chance, Goosey. That's for sure. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a little one. In it. Yeah. Roger's got a mad one as well, doesn't oh, yeah, he? Roger, yeah. They've they've got those ones at fast speed, like Roger and thing. They look both look the same. But yep. you know who my favorite Goosey is besides Bosselli Sarevi. You remember him from Fiji? Um, oh no, nah, bro! Nah. You got to educate yourself on the Goosey. He's the OG. I, I mean, I would have seen highlight clips from. I didn't really watch Rugby Union though. So yeah, he's play sevens. Used to have the rolled up sleeve socks down. He's, yep. He was the OG. But um, so, oh yeah, I've seen, I've seen. Um, yeah, yeah. Rudd Raja. Oh yeah, he had a mad goosey. But he had to, he had to like stop, look at you. But off the back of his goosey, he could palm you yeah, too because yeah. you're waiting for the goosey, yeah. and then you sort of palm there and just yeah. go boof. Yeah. No, so he, he, he was definitely my favourite. Maybe underrated. He's got the most underrated goosey because you don't because you you don't expect guys that big to have such good gooseys. So goosey run around you, goosey run over you, goosey palm you. Sivo has decent goosey, mm. um, but you, your pongers, I just think like he just. His footwork. You know, you know what's crazy. coming too off that wide four, and you'll goosey the four man and hit short onto. Yep. Um, what's his name? Fitzgibbon. Yeah, and he's every re- time he's just like he's so good at like changing his goosey up. Like he'll do a goosey where it doesn't really affect his running technique, and then he'll do an actual goosey where he does jink. Like, and then he can do like the fake goose until it come back. Sort yeah. of um, the one he did on Teddy. Yep. The one he and, and then the one he did on Foran, mm. which is goosey rough foot try time. <laughs> 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 that was the best. Oh, I felt sorry for Fozzie. He doesn't move too well oh, as it is, eh? And he, he, he just got <laughs> waxed. Like everyone's watching. And the worst thing is, like watching, you're like, bro, that would happen to me too. Like, yeah. like anyone in that position is getting waxed. Like it's just the way it is. He even done that fake little drop off too, so sort of held the four man oh, off like, and just cleaned him up, bro. If you could make a play for that perf for that step, like if you could make a scenario for it was broken play essentially because they had just made a break, 
You drop someone off. That's literally like the lead into a Goosey rifle. That's one hundred and one. That's yeah. one hundred and one. If you don't drop someone off, the Goosey goes down by ten percent, and and then it's just like perfect scenario. A <laughs> <laughs> perfect scenario, and there's fucking bows. And I, I think Pong is like six foot two. Is he six foot one? No, nah, he's about the same height as me. He's probably a little bit taller than me. So he's still, but like pretty. No, nah, yeah, actually, yeah, it'd be six foot one, yeah, like six a foot clean one. six foot one. And so, like, for a guy that tall to be moving, like, that's pretty fucking hectic, man. So, that, yeah, that, I, I don't, like, think about when six we, foot. Six foot? Six foot. <clears throat> hey, nah, because I'm six foot and he's taller than me. Right. There's a short change in the button. Update, update the Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, I said he's a bit taller than I. So, <laughs> so yeah, write that thing in the brackets. <laughs> I said he's a bit taller. Um, but think about it. When have we, we've seen people get stepped, like, but when have we seen, like, the full process of, like, I'm setting you up to fully break your ankles right now. And then they're out too. And nail it at mm. full speed. You know what I mean? We Fuck, we, we don't see that. He, and if you watch, like, his highlights, he's done it, like, fucking four or five times, man. Whereas, like, Roger, is, his footwork is, like, more like, So embrace quick, contact day. Eh? Like, yeah. real quick. Like, just he doesn't, like, break your ankles, but he, he does it so quick that he's, like, there before, and you're still looking there. Mm. Whereas, like... Ponger is like, I'm fully decepting you. Like, you're going to go the whole other way than you thought you were going to go. So Ponger's no one goosey. Back in the day, you know, Benji Benji started it all. He's the OG. No mm. one – like, that's – I put up a post saying Benji changed the game more than any player. And and I truly believe I, – I, I, I genuinely believe that. Because, like – It look, paved the way for Sean Johnson, Kalins, them types of players, is, isn't it? When you see – a guy come when you see a guy come through with footwork. What do you say, Benji Marshall? Yeah. When you see a guy come through with a cutout pass or something, you don't say fucking anyone. Mm, you know what I mean? Like, that's true, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like you don't. There's not a single other player that we go. We see him do something, and we go Darren Lockyer. Even though I think Darren Lockyer's the greatest ever, I think Andy I reckon Johnson, John's a pumper, mate. As in in a game, if they oh in a one, no, but we're talking about career. Alfie Langer's got a bit of fucking. Record. If we're talking like one-off games, Langer has some hectic one-off games. Ponga has some one, like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like greatest ever, like over their career. But what I'm saying is, is like, how many kids were influenced, and you see the influence on a regular basis from Benji Marshall. Mm. No touch footy players <laughs> ever played the really. It was always like touch footy doesn't translate to rugby league because you're going to get fucking waxed. Every too time. soft. Yeah, too soft. There's not enough time. Um, blokes are shooting out of the line here, and that's why I think like Benji, like we we will see that for the rest of rugby league's life. Is his influence that didn't exist before he he was there, kind of thing. So that's that does I'm make saying. sense. That when you think about it, like I don't think of anyone with like a cutout pass or Ricky Stewart long ball, Timmy Smith long ball. Yeah, what about those say, stats on Timmy Smith that you put up on his rookie yeah, year? 50, forty, 50, oh, some cra- yeah, forty tries or whatever. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I played with Timmy over in uh, Wakey. He was he was at Broncos for a little bit. He's, loose, he's, loose yeah, human yeah, loves it, loves it. <laughs> but um, yeah, 40, 40 trices. So that's like what twenty seven games or whatever. Let's say he's a twenty, it's like two trices a game. He was telling me one time because I obviously love Joey and me and him had a bear the first night, and I was like, because I remember the game because I support Newcastle and he was sort of like the rookie going up against Joey, yeah. and um, he Joey sort of threw a pass and knocked on, yep. and um, to me goes yeah, like trying to get into him. And he goes fuck, you just made your game harder than it needed to be. Oh, Joey and, said that. Yeah, to Timmy, and then probably the next like. Next set, they got him. He goes, just get it, get at this like yeah, C word, yeah. and it was just like Ben Kennedy and Steve Simpson just going bang, <laughs> bang, bang. Right. Eric has fucked him for the rest of the game because he come out done a banana kick and they scored or something. I and then that. yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Joey just go fuck. You just made your life harder than it needs to be, bro. W- <laughs> what a line though. You just made your life harder than it needed to be. Like you're not saying like I'm going to crush you. Yeah. You're basically saying like you're t- what's about to happen. You're to blame for it. You could have shut your mouth and shown some respect. Now I'm about to take you to school. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. All right, my next question. All righty. Uh, who's the dark horses in the comp uh, team and player? Dark horses. I think Dylan Brown could be a superstar this year. Good Has he got second year syndrome in him? No, nah, I don't think so. He I, seems too cruisy, eh? He, too right. cruisy. And also, like, he only played half the year essentially last year. With a broken back. Yeah, bro- like, broken back. He he didn't, like, he played his role perfectly. Mitchell Moses ran the side. Brown was just, like, good defense. And then every now and then he would do something mad. But he wasn't trying to overplay his hand ever. I've, I feel like the growth of Mitchell Moses has been really good for him. Like, yep. he seems a lot calmer, right? Remember, like, when he first started, he's always getting, like, little niggly shit and, like, trying to get into fights and stuff. Who, Moses? Yeah, Moses yeah. when he's at Tigers. And yep. he just seems nice and calm and controlled. I just think he's maturing as a player. He understands mm. that, like, he can channel that. Because that, that that niggle and that, it's just because he seems like a passionate player. Like, he I, gives yeah. a fuck. Um, I heard for a few different boys, he's like at training, he's trying to win everything. Yeah. Like, even, like, contact and shit Joey like that. Joey was the same. Joey yeah. was the same. He'd fucking try to win everything. So. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think Dylan Brown could be, you know, 
He's, Dylan Brown's like 19, bro. He just turned 19. Just got to upgrade too and a little pay wicket. Yeah, just got an upgrade. Big Good dog. man. Congratulations, yeah, brother. Shout out the boys now. Shout out the yeah. boys. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, buy some merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Dylan Brown, I think, could be, you know, next year's superstar, definitely. But I also think... Um, what's, what's his game? What's it, like, he just... Well, he's, 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 I reckon he's a perfect complement to Mitchell Moses. That's why he's... Because he doesn't really demand the ball, but when he gets it, he can do something with it. Well, I, I think he's like... Because he's, he's about six foot one as well. So he's pretty big, at, really athletic. But he's got like... Ma- I think he's got so much more to show that he didn't show. I think so too, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's got yeah. like mad footwork, mad cutout ball. I just think that because he was under Moses and just learning his trade and mm. Moses run the team, then, you know, he wasn't given the opportunity. Not They didn't need to. They were going so well and why would you change something not working? Whereas I think as he get, gets more confident and Moses gets more confident in him, mm. um, I think we'll see some pretty special stuff from this, this coming season. Yeah, and good to see how power go this year. Luke is a power fan anyway. So. Oh, really? So yeah. you love that shit? Um, and then the Dark Horses, oh, man. I'm just going to say Bronx. Like they, Bronx have got the side where they could just blow the world apart or they could just be like, what has fucking happened? Too young, no experience. I think if they keep the media out there, like they were in the media all the so time. Siebes is in the media. Yeah. They're in the media for playing pokies and they still made the eight yeah. with, a, with a pretty young side. Well, yeah, yeah, you look at their win percentage, it was like 40% or something. Like they shouldn't have made that. It was just a really bad year for Everyone. win percentages. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, not no like and that's no knock on them like I'm not saying it's fucking easy and then I only just make the eight every year what mm. I'm saying is it's like you, that can hide the fact that they were nowhere near where they should have been um, I think Croft's going to be really good for them the Broncos are just again I'm biased because obviously that's my team how do you think how, how do you think Croft's going to go for him like you think he's going to go really well for him it's just so hard man because if because if, if he's a right side half and he's come through that Melbourne system yeah. where he sort of sticks there and they had a massive like strong system but I know Siebes has come from a Melbourne so it might simplify it a rock Roll yeah. a lot. But he's a great runner, eh? Really good runner. Really good runner. I th- like, I think he's he's fine. Like, he, he actually reminds me of Cronk a little bit now. I understand Cronk's like you know much better in passing his career. Like, but you got to remember, Cronk didn't start that good, man. He wasn't mm. even a fucking half when he started. Mm. Um, and I'm pretty sure Croft is still like 21, 22 years old. The biggest issue for him, in my opinion, will be like it's not his playing ability at all. The pressure of being at Brisbane, exactly. It's like they lose four games off the trot. And it's all Croft's fault. Like they forget. Like fans will forget that last year. I think they were, they'll go Darius or Milford first. Well, I reckon, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think they've already done that. Like they've, that 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 dash has been run. Like they've already hated on them for like so hard. Who's the new guy? Who's the new guy to hate? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you just keep hating the same people, it's like well, it's whatever. Milford choose for a big season, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon he'll kill it this year. I reckon he'll kill it. Yeah, this sort year. of back against the wall. He's so much, so talented, man. Fucking gun. And he's also he's lost a lot of weight. Usually, he looks trimmer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, usually, you can see how someone's headspace is is by Simba. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the Simba, like they're looking. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, if they're looking trim, like you look at like a lot of the earlier, like someone that's when they're younger, they look real trim and fit. And as they get older, get a bit more comfortable, put bit more money, on, yeah, bit more money. So usually their holidays get a bit better in the off season. They don't have to like they can get through fitness easier because it's yeah. not as hard. So I think Milford could be in for a special year. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah, cool. You sort of touched on this already, but sort of what you've already done with bloke in a bar social. But what's the goal for next year? Um, or this year now? For social media side, fuck load more content. <laughs> oh, bro, I don't, I've got nothing more in me. There's so much <laughs> nah, um, the, Who, uh, let, I'll reframe the question. Who's your next two, three targets that you're gonna make famous? You got hectic cheese. You got Orba. <laughs> what about Orba? He's just uh, like, he's played 300 games and flew under the radar, and you've just given him this massive profile. It's <laughs> <laughs> like he deserves it. He's a fucking gun, bro. Like he's been around forever. Uh, he got a bit of shit chat on the field. I remember when I was younger, he talked shit on on the field on oh, that. Mad dog, mad dog. He's, you know what? He's you know what? He did, wasn't actually doing it to insult. You. He was trying to make you a stronger person. He's <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the best out of yeah, me. Yeah, he, he told me after the game, so like, I was, oh, so I feel really bad for bagging him, but I, I really think he's going to be a stronger person. <laughs> I think Normie's got a bit of a story, but I won't share that one. <laughs> um, no, it's it's not what I create; it's what people will respond to. Yeah. You know? So, um, who's got, who's got a bit of potential that could be the next the next bloke in the bar oh, influencer? Yeah, 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 oh, fuck, I, it's just like you you got to have. You gotta have cre- you gotta put things in. like Orbo was created out of nothing. Yeah, like, yeah. he doesn't even have Instagram. I've never never even met him. So like, <laughs> do you know? I have seen him at Zitlins, and I was like, I almost felt like I knew the cunt because <laughs> I went to go say hello, and I was like, oh, I don't actually know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. one of my favorite ones that you done is like um the the goosebumps one, and the hair pumps up, and you and the coach when the coach goes to Orbo, oh, we want you to play out. Oh, of position. <laughs> yeah, when you play out of position, goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you know, he's just like... I, oh, no, actually, the one when the water was pouring out and you slapped the um, oh, band-aid on Orbison? it. <laughs> yeah, that was massive. That was the first one. That, so I seen, that, I seen that meme. I was like, bro, that's yeah. perfect for Mitch Orbison. And that was the starter and people really responded to it. Um, and I was like, okay, there's something here. Like people, mm. you know, he has this like... When you've been around for 300 games or whatever he's been around for... You have this like long loyal fan base that know who you are, especially a guy like him. He's a battler, he's a toiler, you know, typifies what footy's all about. And that was the first one. Coach like, he's first picked every week. Oh, man. You know, that's build a, a team around him, build a team around him. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was when I realized, oh shit, there might be some, something on here. And then I did like fucking, I think it's like 10 different memes of like how he could help you. It was like, you know, forgot a condom, all those guys. Yeah. Like, he, <laughs> he was with me last yeah. night. <laughs> and then it like responded really well again. And then I was like, oh fuck, I'll give this a crack here. And it just seemed to. I love my favorite things are the sort of blind shots from far when, like, you know, the one when he's walking across the road with a surfboard and shit yeah. like that. <laughs> Thanking the ocean. It just fucking makes me laugh your train of thought of where you come up with this shit. Like, <laughs> even, even that one just there, and oh, he was bagging me on the field. No, nah, he's just trying to make you a better player. <laughs> and it's just, half it's so, yeah, <laughs> quick it's and witty. In, yeah, it's instant, right? So that, I think that's where your strength lies. All right, yeah. next question. Uh, top album of all time. Bro, I want to go Life of Pablo. I don't, just something about the Kanye West album. There's about fucking 10 bangers on it. Mate, there. that's Fuck not it. even his best album. We, you don't reckon? No way. Uh, me, College me, Dropout. Nah. nah. Like, um, College Dropout's got three songs on it. College, uh, what's the... Oh my God. Late Registration. Late, late registration. registration. Yeah, yeah, Late Registration. Like, all these early stuff, bro. This is what I reckon. Kanye used to be the man because he would talk about shit that everyone could relate to in his own way. Now he is so far removed from fucking reality. He's not relate like Like a... I, I love him as an artist and everything he does with the clothing and stuff. But I watch his interviews, bro. He's so scattered, eh? Yeah, bro. <laughs> people like he says shit, and people are like, "Wow, it's so smart and profound." And you're like, "Bro, that's not smart and profound ever." What he said doesn't make sense. Like it's literally, he's saying shit to just say it. Like it's just it, what does my head in is like. I wish you could just like distance him from all the uh, Kim Kardashian, all that stuff, and you could just get that artist back. Like just that fucking the clothing, like because he revolution like. N- no artist has ever done what he's done in clothing. Mm. Um, I think his thing's like worth one and a half billion dollars now. It, killed yeah. it. So he's a genius, absolutely. But with genius, they're fucking crazy, man. And he and I feel I like think that, I think that's where his strength. Well, that's what that's, it is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's fucking crazy. Like so, don't, and he's one of those guys we'll look at like twenty years or like say he passes on and we're like, fuck, he was right. Oh, but you know, I've listened to his. Interview. He's not even saying anything. Trust me, like, <laughs> he's not saying anything. Like if a normal person said that, that wasn't Kanye West, she'd be like, you are a fucking moron. Yeah. Whereas like when Elon Musk. Talks, he's saying something of substance. And any, if he's anyone's a robot, that, bro, that he's a robot, that dude. He's, all, he's, fucking he's hanging out with Kanye now. Yeah. Oh. You know, in, in recent memory, greatest album, um, in recent memory, like last five years, Post Malone, Beer Bongs and Medley. Yeah, that is a good that's album. That's a mad one. Great album. That, that's fucking great album. When it comes to like greatest of all times, I mean, Tupac's greatest hits was fucking unbelievable. Eminem. Are um, oh, we going back that deep? Oh, fuck, bro. Oh, all time. All I'm time. Just, I'm just thinking about it recently. Yeah. All uh, right, next. Anything. Right. <laughs> next one. Uh, what would you do if you caught Cam Murray in bed with your missus? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is he uh, – who is your bloat? Who is – fuck that, that – Sandor. Mi- you give Sandor, right? Well, I mean, like – He's actually a good bloke too. That's That pisses me off. Yeah. No, I've got a theory. Do you got a slong on him too? Probably, eh? Well, I reckon – Usually those blokes have that, all that sort of everything. Well, just – I just – I honestly – this is my theory. Is like the shitter your haircut, the better bloke you are. The if, mullet, there's some good mullet skin about it at the moment. Because I think – how many blokes do you know with shit haircuts that are actually wankers? Usually they're mad dogs. Because mm, they don't care, eh? And then the opposite of that is if you're above an eight, you can't be a good bloke. Even if you are a good, good bloke, you're not a good bloke. Do you reckon they're just, it's just the, like... Well, it's not allowed to. It's not allowed to. Like, yeah. how, how you got to have something wrong with yeah, you. Yeah, like, how is it fair that you're a mad sore and a good bloke? That's not fair. So and we, rich. No. And rich. <laughs> it's like, you, that's not fair, so it can't happen. Now, Cam Murray caught in bed with the missus. What would I do? I'd say, mate, fucking... Why didn't you come earlier, bro? <laughs> <laughs> why, where have you been, bro? Um, no, nah, he, he's... You know what's good? Cam Murray is like... Is he a good lad? Have you ever been to him, mate? so nice, bro. Like the, that private school vibe, isn't so it? So respectful and nice. Yeah. Like if he had grub in him, he probably would have lost his contract because he would have been sleeping with that many chicks. It was ridiculous. But because <laughs> he, he, he's a nice guy, he's got a missus and he you know, seems like he, he like, treats her, he just like, seems like a really good guy. Whereas if I was him, 
I'd be a piece of shit. Normie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be normie on steroids. I'd be normie on steroids. Normie with a good body. Yeah. I'd be normie with a six pack, which is a bad, you won't want that. Fucking oh, yeah. that's what he says all the time. He goes, if I had a six pack, it'd be unfair. <laughs> <laughs> he reckons a six pack, six pack, blue eyes, and if he could sing, the game would be over, apparently. Oh, right. If normie, normie had a good rig. If he, could hold a good, if he could hold a decent conversation and string a sentence together, it'd be even better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's fair. That's a fair call. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> but you know what? Fuck that. I don't care. Nah. Normie with a good body, he'd quit footy and just be a model, I reckon, in America or something like that. <laughs> Fuck you, smoky eye everywhere. <laughs> Fuck you know. All right, well, next. All right, next one sort of leads in off what you were talking about. Kempi, what cycle are you on? A cycle, bro. I'm, fucking, I'm not even looking good right now. Dude. But you do look soul, man. You no, know, I, I, I think you're I'm all traps, bro. You're I'm trying to. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm tr- honestly trying to lose weight. Like I fucking can't. I'm 100 kilos right now. Cool. Bro, I played at 82. I'm, I got a lot of skinnies. Skinnies yeah. are up. Just skinnies <laughs> are up. Um, that's the worst thing. What is play between the years, bro? You can't skin fold oh, the mind. God, yeah, but I can only play for 30 seconds. So <laughs> fucking. Um, no, nah, I'm, I'm honestly not, nothing. Like nothing. I just. Uh, Fucking, it's a cheeky one. Let's just do a bit of boxing. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, honestly, nothing. I just, I'm, I'm just a fucking big cunt, bro. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, all right, back to the footy stuff. What's the difference between the Warriors culture to Aussie clubs? Benny Modellino, um, I was talking about him. I asked him what the difference was between there and the West Tigers. He goes, oh, it's just like, cause, cause like, Islanders and Maldives is kind of a really like family type bro culture. So he goes, when you go to training, everyone should sit on the mats. Like it is very family oriented. Yeah, club. I, I, the club was the boys in the club was fucking unbelievable. Very like family orientated. And so, yeah, I, t- I totally And then he that. was saying, like, when you get to training at West Tigers, everyone's, like, doing their rehab and <laughs> you know, stuff like that. The boys are just chilling on the mats. And it's sometimes it can help, though, because, like, you got to remember. Yeah, it's that's just, true, that's true. It can help bring – like, sometimes the hard thing is, is, like, you know, there is no connection there. There's no family bond. Like, whereas, like, the, the good thing with the Warriors is even when they're struggling because they have that family bond, they can keep it all together. Um but yeah, again, it's no, it's no particular culture. I talk about so. this in extremities uh, back in that sort of period when it was sort of Manly and Melbourne, the other two teams, and the types of cultures that they both had, where Melbourne was sort of robotic and Manly boys used to go on the piss like the night before a game, yep. but everyone was by, um, in. bought into it. Yep. So, and everyone sees Melbourne's success and they try and copy them. I think that's one of the Warriors' biggest problems now. And the example I give was always off cool runnings. Yeah. So you've seen the movie Cool Runnings, yeah, yeah, eh? So yeah. they're, the, they're the Jamaican side, but they're trying to be like the Swiss side, which are Melbourne. And yeah. I know they got Kearney and he's come through that system, but they're just so fucking structured. Like, why be structured yeah, when you've grown up a natural um, way of playing footy? It's just offloading and passing. Yep. And you've watched guys like Ali Lawatiti and Stacey Jones go to a grand final in that same sort of way. So I'd rather them see them play that way and, like, lose but being themselves instead of trying to be someone else. Yep. That's that's my thing with that's, them. Well, that's the hard thing with the Warriors is like you look at their side and you're like, fucking hell, man. Some of these guys, if you took them to any other club, you mm. know, singularly, they'd be awesome. But yeah, I agree with you. I think you, you, if if you're going to have to have that added pressure of New Zealand Warriors because it's not going to change, like it's not gonna, like they're going to be called the fucking Auckland Warriors or whatever, then I think that you have to look at okay, what do our young boys grow up playing? Like, what are they? How do they grow up playing? Do they grow up playing structured shit and? You know, all that kind of stuff. Or do they grow up playing a free for, more free form footy? And I think that So you see the amount of kids that'll be influenced by sort of Benji and Sean like yep. coming through now, but they've been watching them since they were five and six. And yep. like the types of what, Sonny Bill, he's another one, offloads. He was like our little old TD of our generation. Well, yeah. I, I remember when you played the Warriors, you were like, I'm getting fucking shotted. Like you know what I mean? They're yeah. screaming out of line. Like you don't see that anymore. Mm. And so I feel like we've we've tried as you I agree, I think they've tried to emulate other people. While stripping away what they used to be good at was come out and just fucking bash ya. And also they're constantly offloading. Like you're constantly <laughs> worried about the offload. Like fucking wrap the ball up, wrap the ball up. And so I agree. I think. And it that- takes, uh, when you're noted as an offloader, it takes the punch out of your tackles as well because you're like, oh, I have to get over the ball. Exactly. So yeah. instead of trying to put a shot on when you're trying to play like Melbourne, I remember one time we played uh, Melbourne, we were paying 11 bucks, but we had Adam Docker and Nigel Plum and they were just trying to like um, go forward, go forward. And Plummy and Docker were just pumping them. Yep. And it stopped their whole shape. And, yep. uh, and obviously they got a lot more talent with Melbourne than the Warriors do but like when you just do that you just stop like their natural ability yeah, it's kind of confusing yeah it is, it is it's a hard one because like they un- absolutely have the squad I think like culture wise it's, it's not about culture it's more about like are we are we getting the best out of what they offer you know like if, if you've got like you see it sometimes in you see like a Polynesian boy who'll come into an, a new side in Australia 
and they try to structure him, and he just he, he his whole what he brings to the table just gets completely taken almost out. identity, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like even with the indigenous lads, oh, we want you to do twenty hit ups in game, and you just like, and then all of a sudden they become this hit up merchant, and you're just like, well, that's not what they're good at. Like, mm. you know, Orbo's gonna fucking do you twenty, fucking get an Orbo on your side, you're <laughs> sweet. Um, so yeah, so I, I look at someone like Benny Molina, who's probably yeah. one of the most skillful guys, so good, bro, so skillful, bro, so can zing a ball both ways, can yep. kick off like. He, can kick goals. He could do everything. It was just a battering ram. Yeah, it's just a waste. Like I, that's what I don't understand. You, you go, you go to a guy like Benny Madalena, and you're like, you know, you need to get more meters in a game, and you need this that, and it's like when he was coming through, he was offloading constantly, stepping constantly, running wide constantly, and he was a nightmare to deal mm. with. And yeah, I, I agree. I think that you know, if you're gonna, if you, you're gonna, ha- you're gonna be New Zealand Warriors forever. Therefore, you need to we you need to look at what are this group of men naturally gifted at and how can I bring that out and then just try to fill in all the holes kind of thing. Let the boys live, Kearney. Uh, next question. <laughs> all righty, we got who wins the comp this year? Are we touched on that? Yeah, you sort of did. Yeah, talked about who Yeah, go next. Yeah. Um, all right, wrapping it up. Do you think – hang on. Do you think you are saying – the? T- oh, do you think you are easing the tension between players and fans? That's for you, that question. Um, or if you type of content. Easing the tension, um, man. It's it's not really me. Like I, I guess I'm just letting you see. I'm taking away. You giving it? Do you know what I feel like? You're giving an insight of what it's like to be a football player in the in the locker room. Well, I'm. I'm Hence you know, the pun. <laughs> yeah, locker room. So, like for example, for the last twenty years, the media has controlled the idea you have of whoever you enjoy watching. So, like you might see little 30 second interviews with them and you get like little snippets, but you don't really know them because they're on guard, but also the media controls the narrative, the narrative of how they're trying to portray that. So for example, you might not be a rat bag, but they've put you out, you know, the article has positioned you to be a rat bag. Whereas now with like longer form stuff and more access, whether you follow them on Instagram or you follow mine or whatever, I think you're just that idea that has been ingrained in your head is being broken down slowly, not by me. It's by just actually seeing the player, like, Seeing that they're people, seeing that they like the same shit that you like, they do the same things that you like, and so because um, I, I think I think a lot of once they get to that sort of status of being an NRL player, fans forget that we were a fan of the game too. Mm, so we yeah. understand what it's like to yep. be a fan, yep. but then the same thing is like we we didn't have this sort of pressure of like social media, and so sort mm. of how we touch on it. Um, when he was on the podcast, he goes, back in the day, players were judged for their game and solely for the 80 minutes where the boys could lose a game and they'll go back to Tuesday because they had a story at the beach and like, yep. stop fucking around at the beach and start winning some games. So yep. I think it's probably a narrative that we didn't have to control. Like, so that's, I, I feel like, I feel like you're doing a great job and sort of breaking down the well, walls of that. I mean, same with you, like the, with the YKTR, like you, you, with the vlogs and that, you get to see just them being people. Like, so I, I, that's, that's one of the reasons why we started it. Cause like what had always, like Quaid was an example where everyone used to bag Quaid, but I knew he was a good bloke. So yep. he jumped in the potty, yep. went great. Um, I think DCE is coming on. He's someone that's sort of been bagged through the media, um, over the past, but he's just a great guy and a great mm. dad and loves footy. Like he generally yep. wants to win. So, and with the vlog, so like normally he got into trouble whatever but I knew he wasn't a good um, bad bloke and yep. I knew Checker wasn't a bad bloke and he's nominated for Ken Stephen in the space of two three years because people yep. understood who he was actually was yeah I don't like I don't condone the things he done or whatever or like justifying in them but just to judge him purely off that thing and not see the transition and I think it's a big mistake yeah and I think you're you're only when those things happen they're magnified like that's the only thing you're seeing that he's done like you know how often you know you can live 360 fucking whatever days a year good and then have one bad day, and then that's the what they see of you. They see that one bad day, mm. like and that. So they've got that picture from that one bad day, but they don't realize that like, like I made mistakes, and and what was silly was stupid. But at the same time, these are young men learning that learning to be men. Like, mm. and it's yeah, it's hard because then then you got the flip side of like fuck, you know what? They're fucking so lucky to have what they have. It yeah, it's a negative thing that they do get uh, negatively spoken about, but at the same time. That you know, you wouldn't change it for for anything. You know what mm. I mean to be a footy player. So I get where people come from when they say like, "Look, you're in the public eye. Yep, the media can twist stories and whatever, but that's just the negative side of your job." Same thing with my job. There's negative sides, and I, I get that. Um, you know, I get that. I guess argument as well as like, yeah, that there is the media and they're going to say stupid shit. Yeah, I get that too. You know, yeah, I, I, do, I, I understand do. it. I don't. I don't agree I've with seen, that, but I've Going it. back to Kanye, I seen a clip of him and he walked up to this um, a journalist or reporter to try and take photos of him, and he goes to him. He goes, "Oh, 
He goes, is this your job? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, are you just trying to provide for your family? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, yeah. And he goes, ah, oh, like I, I kind of get it now. And he just goes, yeah. oh, how are you? And it's random as fucking just ends up walking off. So yeah. I understand that element of it. So it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. I it's d- not going to change anytime soon. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think it will change like eventually in the sense that- No, like- do you know what will what change is like, it won't just be one source of media information. Mm. So here's the fucking journalist over here and we're going to be over here just doing our little thing yeah. and- Connecting players to fan and fan to player. I think that's where it's at. Yeah, I think it's also, an option. It's an option. Well, I, I think eventually, you know, if they continue down the route of you know misinformation, I think that um, and not not all journalists are guilty of this, not at all. But you know, they're already seeing way less engagement with their content. They're seeing way less people going to their website. If they don't adapt, they eventually they'll yeah they'll be in a tough spot where they have to make some changes in in a sense of like you know journalists that aren't going to spread misinformation and, and, and whatever or journalists that are going to speak the truth because it's building reputations up, especially with social media. A lot of people will go, I'll just use Clarkie for an example, they might see something on Fox Sports but then they'll go straight to Clarkie and if he hasn't wrote, written about it or he'll give his opinion or they might come to Bloke in a Bar and they'll see like, okay, what's Denon's angle on this? So for example, semi Rajraja thing, like I just I put up a post, I said, look, this is what the media reported. I don't think it's true. There's no quotes. Why would his manager come out and say this, blah, blah, blah. So, like, eventually that's what's going to happen. Like, And if that happens enough times, they, they'll go from checking Fox Sports to coming to you to the – like, they won't even go to Fox Sports. They'll just be like, look, they've misled me so many times. I'm just going to – I know that this is honesty. This guy's built a reputation. Mm. I know he's going to at least give me a balanced view or something. And I think that that, that long Very term- similar to that sort of Wojnowski over in um, ESPN. The Andrew, oh, oh I, don't, I don't watch the Woj. Yeah, right. Woj. So even he goes, if it's not from him, it's not true. So yep. yeah, that's that's the sort of place we need to get to. I reckon. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like you're you're for, you already know who this guy is, and you live in another country. So mm. I, I think eventually it, it'll just like. Don't get me wrong. These guys, these companies are fucking so powerful. You know, when they start pushing that power around, it would be interesting. But yeah. um, media and money do a lot of things. Exactly, <laughs> and, yeah. it's a lot in the headline as well. If we. are Conditioned to just read a headline and moved on. A lot of people do that, but yep. actually click on the article and then if they are sourcing something, click on the source. It yep. should be linked. Yep. And then read the actual real story. Yep. Well, I, I always say that like people in the comment section, I say if it doesn't have a quote, like pretty much disregard it. Like pretty – it's just speculation. Like – it, it means It's nothing. funny, when I read articles, I only look for quotes. Yep. I look for the like, quote marks and go, you know, I just read that because everything else around it. It just, means nothing. It it's, yeah. it's literally means nothing. Like, unless it has a quote from, you know, the player, the manager or whatever, yeah, someone might be leaking this story here or whatever, but from a consumer perspective, if you read it, like, for example, when um, – now, don't get me wrong, Wayne Bennett has said things that aren't true before. I'm not saying that every time it's – but at least then – you can sit there and go, you know what? Wayne Bennett was the one that said something was not true. Whereas like this whole weird thing of like- Staff writer. Yeah, staff writer <laughs> fucking said this and it's like, well, you know, I don't know who that is and whatever. So I just reckon you look for quotes and usually you're pretty you're pretty set for know, know what's going on. All right, guys, we're going to wrap that podcast up there. Just want to thank you for your time, my man. Thank you, bro. I always uh, love coming in here. Always love coming in and I love- uh, Like in the merch or what? Bro, this is literally like every time I go up to, because I go up to work and yeah. I'm working this now- and I like have to keep rotating the shirts of white KTR because I'm like, man, I'm, they're going to look like I fucking wear the same shit every single week. But it's just so fucking comfy. The shorts are mad, bro. I fucking love the shorts. Hey, jump online, buy some stuff, people. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, buy the merch, buy the merch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wish you nothing but success. It's 2020. We'll get you in a bit more this year. Well, yeah, 100%. Same with Bloke and Bar, bro. Get you over there and get you in the new... new, new oh, I've seen the shit. It looks cool, bro. The goosey background. The goose. Oh, yeah, the fucking... Some Fuck, re- that's a lethal fucking goosey. <laughs> it's funny, it's like he's like kicking his ass. Yeah. So. Uh, it's funny, as I could like literally use like any hectic goosey ever, but it's some kid from Kibra Park in fucking <laughs> Goldie just doing this big fat goosey. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Thanks, right. sorry, bro. I was just looking at the video. Alright, yeah. bye. See you oh, later. Geez,